Part of being productive is understanding that you have to unplug from being productive. And that's why if you look at my home screen, it's super clean, it's minimalist. Now, when I'm ready to work the next day, what I do is I can pull down and that's going to give me my Pomodoro timer. I can start a focus mode or I can add a focus mode. If I go upward, I get access to my calendar to see what's going on for the day. And with this one, I'm able to pull down to record anything I want into day one. For me, you can see I do a lot of recording my wins. I think that's very important for you to do that type of stuff. If I go downward, you can see that gives me my to-do list, which I'm a big fan of OmniFocus. And then my third one, if we pull down, that just shows me where I'm at for the day as far as the three things I want to track, which is drinking water, getting in 7,500 steps a day and reading. If I go the other way, that shows me my long-term goals, keep them in my face. And then when I'm done for the day, it's easy for me to pull down on these and to make sure that they're gone away and I can detach from that. This boosts my productivity like nothing else. And this is only one of the things that I wanna show you. I got six more things in this video that I wanna show you that will level up your productivity. All right, so we got two type of users. The first user uses this to binge watch TV or binge watch their favorite show or scroll on social media. So distraction device, but others use it as a productivity machine. And today I want to show you how you can turn your iPhone into a productivity beast. Let me show you what I mean. So the big question is this, how do small content creators like us who's working 40 to 60 hours a week with a family get a competitive edge and become full-time content creators, starting with no social media following, email lists with limited resources? This is the question and this channel will give you the answers. My name is Will. Welcome to Will Talk Tech. Let's talk about it. All right. One of the ways that I use my iPhone is for digital action buttons. I was jealous of the iPhone 15 and I didn't have an action button. So I leveled up my dock and I turned it into one big action button. I got four digital action buttons. Let me show you what I mean. So right here on my phone, you see four buttons. If I click right here on the phone icon, this is my communication button. I have messages, iPhone, weather phone, and I have card hot because I don't use the contact us app on here. I don't like it. So I just automatically delete it. Car hop takes its place. And the cool thing is if you put a note inside of car hop, it automatically shows up in your phone when you're talking to that person. So that's really, really cool. The next one I use is this right here, this button allows me to basically do all my searches, captures, if I wanna study something and just look over my second brain. We're gonna talk more about this in detail, but I just wanna show you what these buttons do. This allows me to open up when I'm ready to get down to work or do something pertaining to content, as you can see. And then this right here is my automation button. Now, I would love to show share this shortcut with you, but to be honest, I can't because there's so many different shortcuts combined into one which I'm going to come out with a video next week. I'm still working on it, but I'm going to come out with a video next week showing you how to do something like this for yourself using what I like to call shortcut blocks because that's what all of these are, shortcut blocks combined into one big thing. So one of the ways that I like to use this is by allowing me to search for things without actually having to step into that app. So let me show you what I mean. If I click right here on menu and I do a search, let's say I want to do search and let's say I want to look up something on YouTube. I'm in deep research and I'm trying to figure out, let's say how to create a new shortcut. Okay. So how to create a shortcut. I can click on here and when I say done, it's going to automatically type it into YouTube for me search bar and it's going to bring me directly to this page, which means I bypass all of the distractions. I can stay focused on what it is I'm doing and I don't have to worry about getting distracted. The cool thing is this works for all of these with the exception of the app store. This is just going to open up the app store. But if I wanted, to, if I had something I wanted to search on Amazon, I could do the same thing. I could say, so I can search up SD card reader and I can open it up. It's going to type it in to Amazon for me. And then it's going to automatically take me to that search, bypassing all of the distractions that would normally get me had I started out on the home page. All these things are trying to distract me and get me to buy stuff. So this right here, I like that. I use this all the time. If I had something custom, I could do custom, which is right here, a custom search. And it opens up all of these different things to me. Now, some of these things I don't have on my phone, such as eBay or DuckDuckGo or Bing, but it opens up all these to me and I'm able to use these. Whatever service I want to do my search on, I'm able to click into that service. So if I wanted to click on Reddit, now I'm going to search Reddit and I can type this in and search directly Reddit. So that's pretty cool. I don't think I have Reddit on this phone though. So creating this search feature, the ultimate search feature is awesome. That 
crushes when it comes to productivity and just keeping me in the right flow. But I got a better shortcut than that. I want to show you how I go about creating content. So for example, let's say I had something that I wanted to start doing research on. Let me show you how it gets started on my phone. All right. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click right here. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to click right there. Well, actually, yeah, I'll click right here and go this way. I'm going to click on my builder app. I'm going to say mind map, and then I'm going to say the research because let's say I'm researching something. Then I'm gonna say, let's say YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna say YouTube tips. I'm gonna say done. And what that just did was it went out, it created, it grabbed this template file that I have, and you see where it says template? I can actually double click in there, and I can click paste, and it automatically copied whatever I put into that field box. It copied it to my clipboard so I could paste it here. But it also went a step further. It actually labeled this folder, this file inside of my node, YouTube Tips. So when I'm looking at it, I instantly know what it is. The cool thing about it is that I can start over here like as I would normally do. I can click into here, and I can start thinking about what's the hook or the big idea. I can go down this line, and I can see if I have anything worth actually creating. If not, I can scrap it or archive it for later. Maybe I come back later or maybe I don't. But this is one of the ways that speeds up my productivity like no other, being able to cre create these quick templates on the fly. I think this is a good time to show you my second page because I do have a second page. And usually if I'm not in productivity mode, I don't want to be messing about with my dock area. My dock area is for me to use throughout the day when I'm in productivity mode and I just think I want to get stuff done. But after a certain time when my phone goes to like you see here a blank screen, my mind shuts off. So in that case, I use my second page. Usually my second page is only set up for apps that I use all the time. Meaning that if you look right here, I have my finance app with all the different bills I have to pay and stuff like that. I have Devin Think, is, which is an app I use all the time. And then this role right here is dedicated to basically me going to the gym. I only have music on here because I have a music playlist when I'm at the gym. I go to LA Fitness. Copilot is a trainer that I use when I'm at the gym. Actually, I really like Copilot. And then OmniFocus is over here because usually if I want to capture something, I'm muscle memory. I still click down here. I try not to, but I still click down here. And I just stop trying to break that habit. Then I have shortcuts. YNAB is my finance app. I have Pokemon Go because yes, I'm a Pokemon Go nerd. I love Pokemon Go. Then I have Audible when I'm listening. My app of choice these days is AnyType. Mainly, you know the main reason why I like AnyType? Because I don't have to worry or wait on my templates to load. It's instantaneous because it's nothing to download. That's the only reason why I want AnyType. Other than that, I don't see a big difference between Notion and AnyType. YouTube, my YouTube studio, and then vidIQ. vidIQ is how I do my research for these type of videos. YouTube studio is how I check my stats to see how I'm doing. And then obviously YouTube is what I sit on all day when I'm not being productive. So this page right here is only for my essential apps. I don't have any extra apps on here that I don't use. And if I'm in work mode or if I'm done for the day, this is how my phone remains at all times. Okay, so I showed you my ultimate search, but now I wanna show you my ultimate capture because here's the deal. I use a lot of different apps, meaning I use Tick Tick, I use Things 3, and I use OmniFocus. And I use these three apps for three specific different reasons. If I'm in Things 3, it's because I'm, my, I'm telling my mind I want to focus on product creation, creating digital products. If I'm in Tick Tick, I'm telling my mind I want to zone in and only focus on creating the best content I can for my YouTube channel. If I'm in OmniFocus, I'm telling myself, hey, this is everything else that I need to get done. Now, for me personally, this works out great. For you, it might not, but for me, having separate apps for different parts, is I find it to be a nice little way to flip the switch in my brain and say, okay, it's time to go to this versus having everything in one centralized location. But because I don't have everything in one centralized location, using the ultimate capture, I'm telling you, it makes it so easy to connect all these apps. And a cool thing about it is shortcuts blend them all together and I don't have to worry about anything. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right. So if I click right here, ultimate capture is right here. If I click right there, let's say we're going to do a real project. OK, so we're going to say I'm going to say focus and grit. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, all right, so this is what I put demo project show how to create a project. So I'm going to say done. You see, once I said done, it immediately opened me up to focus and grit podcast, which is the section in Tick Tick where I store all my ideas for creating podcasts. Now I can hit the plus button. Once I hit the plus button, I like to come down here. I'm going to say paste. I'm going to double tick this. 
I'm going to cut that. And what I'm going to do is paste it up here. Now, because TickTick doesn't have any direct shortcuts that it talked to us of this video, this is how I have to do it. I cut that and then I just backspace. Once I do that, I get this user template. I took the time out to create templates that I need for content creation. So I have my content creation template at the top. I put what this podcast is about or why I got it or what I was thinking about at the time. Now, let's say I wanted to take this same podcast and create a template for it inside of my OmniFocus. Well, let's grab this. We're going to grab this right here, copy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this again. I'm going to say ultimate current capture. Then I'm going to say new video project OmniFocus. And when I click and paste, because I want this demo project to match the project name inside of TickTick. I'm gonna say done. What's gonna happen is now OmniFocus have went out, grabbed demo product, and now I have the exact same layout that I will have inside of TickTick. And now if you notice on each one of these next to it, it has the actual name. This, I used to not put the name, but this allows me to know what projects I'm working on and how to move these things around. So if I wanted to come into OmniFocus and start giving these days that I want to do it, I can easily do that. This is the reason why I like this so much. And this is how I got all of my apps talking to one another using shortcut. One more thing I'll show you is if I click on ultimate capture right here, I can also do a brain dump. And the brain dump is cool because sometimes I just want to dump everything out my head. So if I say, let's say test, demo, uh, read, write, and I say done, if you notice, it does not open up OmniFocus. It went to OmniFocus, and now if we check, normally the way I would check is I would just click on my builder apps, and I would just click on OmniFocus. That's how I would normally do it. And if we come down here, we can see all of them is now up in here on their own separate line. And this is how I do a brain dump. If I just wake up that morning and I got a lot on my mind, I can come up in here and I could just open it up and I could just go for what I know. And this app will not open up so I won't get distracted and I can filter those later on in the day. I really like that a lot. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up so I'll know you like this type of content. But also, if it's a shortcut up in here or something that I did that you wanna know how I specifically did that thing, make sure you let me know in the comments below so I can create a specific shortcut tutorial on that specific question. All right, hands down, the most productive way I use my iPhone has to be my second brain. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I click through right here, and I come down to second brain, you can see that I have Devon Think, Notion, Craft, AnyType, and Obsidian. But in this case, I specifically want to go to Obsidian because Obsidian is where I house all my real data, meaning that if I'm creating a piece of content, this is where it's going to live. So all my psychology that I've learned, all the different books that I've read, all the different science-based studies that I've done, all the things that I should know when it comes to human psychology, all that stuff is up in here when it comes to productivity. All that stuff is over here. And this is what's called my slip box. So my slip box, you can see human psychology mastery. So I like psychology, human psychology. I'm not 100% sure why. I just enjoy it. It's something that I like provable things. It, it I like when it's science-based stuff. It, it makes me feel confident that if I give it a shot, I have a pretty good chance at succeeding. So I tend to study human psychology. But long story short is this. If I'm creating a new video, Nine times out of 10, I'm looking at my slip box to see if there's anything, any material that I can pull out to back up what I'm saying versus just throwing random ideas at you. Even if it worked for me, I want you to know that I'm not just a one-off. So I use my second brain for that. And my slip box is where I go when I actually want relevant distilled information, because that's all the information that I've distilled over time from all the different books on the read. Now, I still have information in places like any type, mainly notion though but any type notion devin thing devin thing got a lot of stuff up in it but that stuff is like all the raw data that's been pulled in my slip box is like that it's like that refined piece of information that I've pulled or extracted out of all that data. So hands down, having my slip box is probably the most productive thing I do having my phone out and I'm always adding to my slip box. So right now my phone is locked. 
So I'm gonna lean it up so my phone can see me. It just unlocked. And now what I wanna do is I just wanna push this button right here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna act as if it's an action button on the front of my phone. And the cool thing about it is it's gonna open up and it's gonna allow me to go straight into quick capturing my idea so that I don't have to worry about it. Now, the app that I'm using for this is an app that I just learned about recently. And that app is called Locker. It's called Lock Launcher. Now, they gave me, I think it cost me like $3.99 for lifetime access because I didn't purchase it. So later on, when I hit the limit, it offered me $3.99 for lifetime access. And that's what I did. And this is called Locker. This is going to be an app that I'm going to show you how I use later on. But I just wanted to whet your appetite and get you excited about shortcuts because I'm telling you, when you start using shortcuts to level up your productivity, I mean, you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. And I'm hoping I sold you on shortcut. All right. So if you want to know how you can do the same thing that I'm doing with my phone and you want to start learning shortcuts, I created a video called Shortcut Simplified. You can watch that video right here. Inside that video, I assume you know nothing about shortcuts. And the best part of all is I show you two simple ways you can get started with shortcuts easily without doing a lot of complex stuff. I'll meet you in that video. Later.